Well, the time has finally come to upgrade my Prusa Mark III. Today we're going to do the Bontech Extruder upgrade and I'm going to take you through step by step with some test prints. Regular viewers to the channel will know how much I love modifying 3D printers. In fact, sometimes it's more addictive to modify the printers than to actually use them. So why haven't I modified my Prusa Mark III? Well, to use a car analogy, it's my daily driver. If I keep it stock, I know it's reliable and I can have as much fun with all the other ones as I want without worrying about being stranded, not able to 3D print. With that in mind, the upgrade that I'm fitting should be plug and play and maintain that reliability. And it's the Bontech Mark III Extruder Upgrade. There are three different options depending on your model of Prusa i3, but the one in this video goes for 105 US dollars. What you're seeing here is from the Bontech website. Let me explain what makes it special. One side connects to the stepper motor shaft, is tied in with a grub screw, and then is connected via the other with a dual drive gear system. The filament is therefore gripped on both sides, giving it really strong force. So strong, in fact, that Bontech claim you can double your printing speed. So the Bontech system is definitely an upgrade on paper, but there's only one problem, and that's that the Prusa Mark III already comes with one. So why would you fit this kit? Here's a preview of the before and after. This is the original model, and this is the Bontech upgrade. You can see it's pretty similar, but the smaller stepper motor probably stands out. The original extruder parts are 3D printed in the Prusa print farm from PETG. It's got a full size stepper motor coming in at 387 grams, and it's one to one drive direct from the stepper motor. These upgrade parts are also 3D printed, but using an SLS process from a much more exotic material. It uses a smaller pancake stepper motor at 266 grams, and it is geared three to one from the stepper motor. The geared stepper motor should produce more torque and accuracy, and the lighter gantry should mean less ringing. Now it would be remiss of me not to mention that this is a community driven mod. All of these fine people highlighted here in orange have contributed ideas and geometry towards this being the ultimate upgrade extruder. So we know how our printer might be improved after fitting this upgrade, but to test that we need a baseline. I'm still chipping away printing parts for my Max the Megapod project. And for this one we're printing a leg and I bump the default printing speed all the way up to 100 millimeters per second. The result considering that is quite good. My high print speed had the desired effect of bringing in ringing into the print, as well as something I didn't necessarily anticipate and that was some artifacts on the underside where the steep overhang is. If you look closely, you'll see some very fine stringing in this gap here. It will be interesting to see if any of this is improved. We've got our baseline, so let me take you through step by step with preparation and disassembly. Linked in the description are the official instructions from Bontech for what I'm doing in this video. I still did need my assembly manual to get the wires routed back the correct way. There's also a 3D printed part that you're encouraged to print to help you slice the PTFE tube to the correct length. Once we have that printed, we can start the disassembly and I decided to start with the cooling fan. There's one bolt for the orange shroud and two holding on the 5015 fan. Now we can remove the four bolts holding on the knock to a hot end cooling fan and carefully let it hang until later on. Next, we remove the two bolts holding on the filament loading cover on top of the extruder. This part and the bolts will be reused later on. We can start to disassemble the extruder by working our way around and removing all of the M3 bolts. This includes the bolts that hold things like the pinder probe in place. Just like with the two fans, once we remove this probe, it's just got to hang gently until later on. Probably the most annoying part of this whole process is the fact that we have to redo the wiring because the new extruder stepper has a separate cable. Cut and remove the three cable ties holding on the cable loom and then unwind it all the way back into the electronics case. Follow the extruder cable to the main board and squeeze a little tab to unplug it. It's tagged with an E. There are three long M3 bolts that hold the extruder onto the X carriage. Remove these three bolts, but put them aside. You will need them again later on. The extruder will now be dangling from the wiring. Take care to support it. You can cut the last two cable ties that are holding the heater and thermistor wires. This will reveal that the extruder stepper motor wires is the last thing holding on. To get rid of that, we need to remove the five bolts on the back holding the two halves of the X carriage together. There should now be enough room to pry back the rear cover and remove that extruder stepper motor wire. In its place, you're gonna feed through the new one. 
Our disassembly of the 3D printed extruder parts can continue. We need to pull this apart to remove the old stepper motor and therefore access the dual drive Bontech gears which are recycled for this upgrade. There are some little needle bearings in one half of this so take care not to drop and lose anything. It's probably easiest to leave the idler side stuck in place for now. The final thing to remove is the bolt holding in the optical filament sensor. Once you remove that, you should very carefully slide that out, being careful not to touch the very shiny part. Now it's simply a matter of taking out the final bolts so we can remove the halves of the extruder and remove the E3D hot end assembly. I found this surprisingly tricky to lever out at the right angle, but just be patient and you'll get there. That's everything apart, we're ready to proceed. So we'll start doing that by swapping over the last few parts and then reassembling. At this stage, if you haven't already, you can unbox the new parts from Bontech. Beyond the welcome card, you'll find the extruder assembly. I found that it was together more than the instructions may have suggested. The parts feel lightweight, but strong, and have a really nice finish from the SLS, almost like powder coating on metal. There's a couple of small additional parts, including the fan shroud, as well as some PTFE tube that you're going to cut up to use inside, a new extruder stepper motor cable, and the fan mount. Finally, the last thing in the box is all the nuts and bolts that you need for your assembly. Now's a good time to inspect and test the 3 to 1 ratio of the extruder. We're going to start by putting in a square nut in the lower left corner, and also inserting the roller bearing in the opposite piece where designated by the instructions. We're going to remove one half of the drive gear from the original extruder and then sit it on top of that bearing. It's important at this point to verify that everything is aligned and the filament pathway lines up with the hopped part of the bolt. Now we can take the sub-assembly with the shaft and the long white cog, loosen the grub screw until it slots down into place and then tighten it as much as you can, Loctite is recommended. Once again, check that everything is aligned and moving freely. We're going to use a small hex key to push out the center shaft on the other half of the drive gear still mounted to the previous extruder. With a little bit of persuasion it should come out and be very careful not to lose or damage the delicate needle bearings inside this sub-assembly. This piece now slides into one end and then snaps into the other on the new lever arm for the new extruder. It should go in with a satisfying little click. Now, like me, your shaft is probably misaligned, so you need to once again get that hex key and push it until it's flush on both sides. It's fairly stiff, but with some pushing, it will come. Once you think you have it aligned, double check by rolling it to make sure everything is moving freely. This lever arm will now align with the main part of the extruder, and then we're gonna insert the locking pin the whole way in from the top to secure it into its correct position. Once again, make sure everything is moving freely. This is a great time to ensure that the dual drive is meshing correctly. The lever arm is now retained on the extruder by screwing in the spring assembly. No need to get this tight yet, we can adjust it later on. In terms of precision, this next part is probably the most important. We're going to insert our PTFE tube the whole way in, and then we're going to align it on the guide we printed earlier on, and use a very sharp blade to cut it off flush. This should allow exactly 6.3mm to be protruding, and the instructions recommend easing the filament entry, which I achieved with a countersink bit. Now we can reinsert the tube, lift up the locking ring and slide in the printed part that acts like a circlip. For the next part, we're gonna need some electrical tape cut to five millimeters width and it's gonna wrap around the groove mount for the hot end. This will ensure a snug fit when you angle it into the extruder body. It's time to grab the other half of our extruder body and we very carefully align it and push it into place. There should be no gap and it should require little to no force to get the two pieces to meet. If you're having trouble, pull the two pieces apart and check for obstructions. In preparation for putting everything back together, I needed to reference the original wiring diagram to make sure I had routed the wiring correctly. Once I was confident of this, I reinserted the five bolts that hold the front and rear cover of the X carriage together. At this point, we're ready to offer up the new extruder. I found it best to get everything aligned and then insert the lower two bolts of the three. One of these bolts is slightly longer than the others and it's clearly marked in the instruction which of the three holes this goes in. Following the original Prusa assembly instructions, I used two cable ties to secure the hot end and thermistor wires to the bottom of the cable mount. Don't bother attempting any other wiring tidy up on the rear yet because we can't do that until the front components are bolted in place. The first component we're going to connect is the new stepper motor. There's a neat pathway for these above the hot end cooling fan which you can now bolt into place. You should frequently check that everything moves as it should and no cables are strained. Time to reassemble the part cooling fan and we're going to introduce one of our new parts here. You first have to press the hex nuts into the back of it 
Then you spin it around and attach it at the center gold threaded insert. Now we can use the new fan shroud down the bottom on the remaining gold insert. Finally, we can take the 5015 fan and align it down the bottom. There's a little slot that you can see on the left. Once we can see that this slot is aligned, we can use the two bolts from the new kit to secure into the nuts that we previously pressed into place. Next up, we're turning our attention to the Pinder probe and we're gonna insert a square nut into the back fitting as shown in the instructions. After this, we're gonna carefully wrap around the cable as per the original assembly instructions and then slide it down into place before clamping it shut with another M3 bolt. That little printed jig comes in handy again as we take our remaining PTFE tube and cut it once more to the correct length to go in the top of the extruder. I once again took the opportunity to enlarge the opening to prevent filament jamming in future. This piece of tubing simply presses into the only hole that fits on the top of the extruder. The next step is to reinsert the optical filament sensor. It doesn't have a retaining bolt anymore. And once again, be careful you don't put any fingerprints on the shiny part, which is the actual sensor. Plug in the cable at the back and take the previous cover, which we put aside, ready to reuse in exactly the same way. It slots over the PTFE tube, and then we retain the existing hardware to bolt it down on top of the new extruder. Now is a great time to add some more tension to the extruder spring so you don't forget later on. It should be firm, but not too tight. Now comes the tedious job of rewrapping all of the cables back to the control box. Once you reach the bottom, don't forget to push it through the slot and cable tie the fitting down the bottom as well as the three on the back of the X carriage. Once again, check that everything is moving freely. You should have one loose wire inside the control box and that's the new lead for the extruder stepper. The black wire needs to face up, which is the opposite of last time. Fight your way through all of the cables in there, plug it into position, and then close up the box. As per the original instructions, I manually lowered the nozzle until it was touching the bed and used a cable tie to set the height of the Pinder probe. Congratulations, your physical install is complete. The good news is that's everything physically done and there's only two little tweaks to do before we can start printing. We need to update our extruder steps per millimeter in the firmware. You can download the G-code file and put it on your SD card, or alternatively, I chose to open it up and enter the two lines through a terminal in Octoprint. Keep in mind there are different files for different printers. Since we've moved the Pinder probe, we should go to calibration and then run the first layer calibration wizard. I found that mine required little to no adjustment, but it's better to be safe than sorry and risk jamming the nozzle through the top of the PEI sticker sheet. The good news is we're finished and we're ready to print. Now at this point, I wanted a direct back-to-back -back comparison, so I ran the exact same G-code again to make another Maximegapod leg. Unfortunately, there didn't really seem to be any improvement in the ringing, which was just as evident on the new part as the old. There was, however, a significant improvement when we looked at the bottom of the part. That new angled part cooling fan position is much, much more effective, and it got rid of all of our artifacts. The bridging quality on the underside to me looks identical and there was a small but noticeable improvement in the stringing in the open sections. I did also print a bunch of PLA parts at a more sedate speed and they turned out beautifully but then again they probably would have turned out beautifully on the original setup. So in summary this is a very very high quality kit and it feels right at home in place of my favourite 3D printer. The big plus for me is improved part cooling, although I acknowledge that you can print the angled fan mod separately without using this kit. On paper, with the lighter extruder and the gearing, it should be more accurate and reduce ringing. In real life, I found it hard to tell the difference. But you know what? I'm happy to fit it and showcase it on this channel as a celebration of the collaboration found in the community, which I'm very proud to be a part of. If you have any thoughts about this upgrade, leave them down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.